So you've been playing through your Helix for a while now, you got all your favorite guitar tones dialed in, but you decide you want to add some vocals to your project. Or maybe you want to record your acoustic guitar through your favorite condenser mic. Or maybe you just want to record the noises your dog makes when it's sleeping. So today I'm going to show you how to actually set up your Line 6 Helix as an audio interface, uh, go through all the steps one by one, kind of get into the nitty gritty of how to actually set the settings to get sounds coming from a microphone, an external microphone, into the Line 6 Helix, through it, and into a computer, into a DAW that you can actually then record and use in whatever project you're working on. So for this project, I'm using just a MacBook Air. Um, I'm going into Studio One for my recording software, but this will work regardless of whether you're using a Mac or a PC. Uh, it'll work regardless of what recording software you're using. Uh, like I said, it's, we're basically just focusing on how to actually set the Helix up, how to get the settings and the the volumes and all that working, talking together so that it will actually be sending signal to your computer. So let's get started. We're just gonna go through this step by step. Obviously to start with, we're gonna turn our Helix on. While that's booting up, we can plug in the microphone we're gonna be using. We're gonna plug the USB cable that was provided with, with the Helix unit into our computer. Um, Gonna adjust a few settings and then we'll be ready to go. So I got Studio One open on my computer. Uh, I got the Helix plugged into our USB connection, but right now, if you can see the uh, the inputs here, it's just working off of my computer's internal microphone. So within your recording software, you are gonna have to go to wherever it is that you can direct which inputs are coming in, and you're gonna have to select the Line 6 Helix as your inputs. Um, so on Studio One, I just hit this tab, I go to Preferences, um, it has an option for playback or device and recording device, I'm just going to go down and select Helix Audio. One thing to note here, if you don't have the, the software from Line 6, oh really quick, it's telling me uh, that the sample rate does not match, we can change that later within the, the Helix. Um, but anyways, if you don't have the, the HX Edit software installed, you're gonna wanna go ahead and do this. It looks something like this, HX Edit. Um, when you do that, it doesn't matter if you're doing it on a Mac or a PC, it will install the necessary drivers you need to be able to do this. Um, if you don't, there is a chance that the Helix won't be able to talk to the, the audio interfaces within your computer correctly. So. If you haven't installed HX Edit, go ahead and do that. That'll automatically get the drivers that you need, and then we can keep going from there. So if you see now, I have Helix recorded. I have my mic plugged in and everything, but there's there's no signal coming through my mic. So we got to change a few things within the Helix on board that itself, um, and then we'll start seeing some signal. So we're in the Helix. The first thing I'm going to need to do is turn on phantom power to my mic. Um, I'm using a condenser mic, so it requires phantom power. Obviously, if you're not using a mic that needs that, you can skip this step. Something to just remember, you always want to make sure that your mics are plugged into the XLR before you are toggling any phantom power on. But So to do this, we're going to hit the menu button. We're going to go over to global settings, hit that. Um, and we can see here the second button over, mic in 48 volt phantom power. Um, Right now it's off, I'm just gonna spin that to on. Um, another thing we're gonna wanna pay attention to on this global settings screen is the third button over is our mic in gain. Right now it's at zero decibels. Um, I am gonna have to come back and dial that up a little bit to get the signal I want through. But for now I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna go back to a preset for this. I'm just using a, a basic standard preset, brand new, I haven't done anything to it yet. And I'm gonna show you what I changed to get signal coming through. To begin with, we're gonna to wanna to go to our input. Right now it's set to multi, so I'm gonna hit select, and I'm gonna to toggle down till I get to mic. See mic right here. Um, I'm gonna select that, so that's telling us that we want, that's telling the Helix that whatever the, whatever the mic is sending in as an input is gonna be what's showing up here. And then we're gonna come over to our output, and we want this to be outputting through the USB cable that we have set up to our computer. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come down till I see USB 1, 2, and I'm gonna select that. So now we have, we have nothing in the, like the block chain in our Helix. It's just literally a drive signal coming in. 
and a dry signal coming out. Um, but this is all we need to do to actually get signal through to our computer. Obviously, we can add any internal effects from the Helix that we want. We could add echoes and reverbs and delays and um, anything like that. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to use that dry signal. So if we go back into the, uh, the recording software we're using, we can see now that we have some signal coming in from our microphone, um, but it's super quiet. And now, so now we're going to have to adjust that, that input gain setting that I was talking about within the global settings of our Helix. So once again, if we go to our menu button, um, go to global settings, now we have mic in game. I'm going to crank that up to about 20, we'll do 24 decibels and see where that gets us. One last thing within our global settings, if we go to global settings um, and go over to the last page, it will tell us the sample rate that we'll be recording at. Um, so we're going to want to make sure that this is in line with what the recording software we're using is set to. Um, you have four options, obviously 44.1, 48, the 88.2, and 96. I'm just going to put it at 44.1 for the sake of this since what I'm recording is not super high quality to begin with. Um, but just be aware that you can change that sample rate within the, the menu settings as well. So you can see now, even just from me talking, the signal coming into the computer is quite a bit higher. Uh, if we were to put a vocalist or an acoustic guitar on this mic, we would have a good enough signal now to record with it. So we know we're going to have to use headphones since we're recording uh, into an open microphone in the same room. But if we record, if we just plug the microphones into our computer and just listen to the playback through the DAW, we're going to get a little bit of latency just due to the fact that it's, you're hearing the signal after it's gone through the DAW. Um, but if we change the settings in our computer to have the sound output going back to our Helix, um, and then we just plug our headphones into the headphone jack on the Helix. We will hear uh, a, a crisp signal of whatever's coming into the Helix from the microphone with zero latency. And it works as a great setup for monitoring what you're recording as it's going into the uh, recording software on your computer. So that probably made no sense. Let me show you what that looks like. Hopefully it'll clear this up. So we're back at the computer. Obviously, if we are trying to monitor what we're recording. If I just plug headphones into the computer and and listen back through that, it's gonna be a little bit delayed because I'm hearing the process signal after it's gone through the recording software. Um, obviously we can't just plug them to external speakers because we're recording into a microphone. If we do that, there's gonna be a ton of bleed through from the speakers themselves going back into the microphone. Um, we might even get feedback from that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to um, I'm going to go to a system preferences. So on a Mac, it's just that gear. Um, on a PC, I believe it's Control Panel, and I think it's Sound and Hardware. If you go to that, there will be an option to control what channel your sound is playing through. Um, so on a Mac here, I'm going to hit Sound and since I have those drivers installed with HX Edit, I can select Helix Audio as the sound output for my computer. So now whatever sound my computer would be playing is going to be fed back through the Helix. And if I plug my headphones into the output or into the headphone jack of the Helix, I will hear that. So if I'm if I'm tracking along with something I've already recorded and I want to be in time, um, I can just have that playing within my recording software and it will be playing through my ears, through the Helix. While I'm playing my instrument or singing, the microphone is only gonna be picking up the room sound, not what's coming through my headphones, um, thus keeping the tracks separate and clean. So I realized I just covered a ton of different steps. Hopefully that kind of cleared up how you can use your Helix as an audio interface. Any questions you have, just leave them in the comments below. I will put a link to another video um, up in one of the corners here. Uh, it's another video on YouTube that goes into more depth on how you can use the Helix to do multi-tracking so you can have multiple inputs and outputs all being recorded through there and a little bit more in depth on how to set up your DAW um, 
as well. So if you have questions about using it to a more uh, in-depth extent, definitely check out that video. Um, but yeah, like I said, hopefully this helps clear stuff up. If you have any questions, like I said, just leave them below. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. We will see you guys in the next video.